Today on the 5 Minute Book Review, we're going to tackle another graphic novel. The year was 1987 and comic book writer J.M. DeMatteis pitched a story idea to the good people of Marvel Comics. One where Spider-Man's arch nemesis, Craven the Hunter, would actually, quote, kill Spider-Man. And then Craven would put on the Spider-Man costume and take his place for two weeks before the real Spider-Man was resurrected. Yeah, well, it sounds pretty tame by 2009 standards. Keep in mind, this story is 22 years old, and Spider-Man comics did not tackle such dark topics like all-encompassing revenge, sexual assault, and suicide in 1987, making this an unusually disturbing and extremely dramatic story that played out for six consecutive issues that has been published into graphic novel form at least half a dozen times since then. Coin toss to start, and Curtis is the winner. Five Minute Book Review starring Curtis and Ian, and today we're going to take a look at Straight from the Mind of J.M. DeMatteis, Craven's Last Hunt. You'll see Ian Goodwilly holding it up in graphic novel form. I have the original six, which I sleep with under my pillow. Yeah, I'm weird. Uh, this story came out in the late 80s. If you weren't a fan of Marvel Comics in the late 80s like I was, not a lot of disturbing dark stuff coming out of that company on the Spider-Man side of things anyways. So I was young and impressionable and for whatever reason this really left its mark on me. I still read this guaranteed once a summer. I'll take it to the lake and read it and I love it. It's dark and uh, it's really hard for me to do five minutes on this without just sitting here going, I love this. This is great. I love this. This is great. Repeating over and over. Uh, again, it came out in like 88, 89 does it stand up over time? I think so. I think it really was legitimately about 20 years ahead of itself. And uh, yeah, things a lot more disturbing here in uh, 2009, but I think it holds up. Ian? I agree. I think it's a fantastic story. It uh, definitely holds up since its uh, inception, well, like you said, almost 20 years ago now. But uh, at the same time, I don't know if it feels as dark now as it did then. I mean, I read it for the first time the same time you did. And you know what? Yeah, I'll tell you that, it did some damage, but at the same time, I don't know if somebody reading it today would be. I mean, there's a lot more media out there today that is a lot more dark, that is a lot more uh, having a larger effect on people's minds, especially children's, and I don't know if uh, reading this would uh, have the same effect as it did then. At the same time, though, it still is a fantastic story. I mean, it's one of probably the top five Spider-Man ones of all time, something I quite enjoy. I mean. Uh, there's a few that have come out since then I'm also very much into, but this is one I keep going back to as well, over and over again. But definitely just doesn't feel as dark as it did back in the, uh, back in the good old days of the late 1980s, when everything seemed so fresh and new. It came at a good time, though, because, again, there wasn't a lot of dark stuff coming out of uh, the Spider-Man franchise at the time, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, like, literally out of nowhere, for two months, they give you this little crossover story that deals with, like, suicide, and uh, it, it just really... It was, again, completely ahead of its time. They took two characters that people, the writers had done nothing with in the last, like, 10 or 15 years of the comic franchise, and they just absolutely rewrote the characters, and they made them brilliant. Craven and Venom? Vermin? Well, yeah, I mean, they're great characters, but this is also a time when uh, guys like Punisher and Wolverine are starting to gain prominence, too. So, I mean, it's not like Marvel Comics was completely, you know, equivalent to Archie. It is, it's... It's a time of changes for Marvel Comics. It's a time of new stuff happening, of a new direction for it. I mean, definitely, this is one of their darker Spider-Man storylines, but at the same time, it's, uh, it's not the only thing out in Marvel at that point in this world. It's not the only thing that is, uh, well, like you said, dark. When Spider-Man's usually, you know, swinging around the city, cracking one-liners, fighting mm -hmm. Dr. Octopus, and all of a sudden you pick yeah. up a book, Ian, and it's like, no, somebody killed Spider-Man and buried him, and then took his place, and then went on a mission to beat the one bad guy he never beat before, just to prove he was superior. That's pretty messed up when you're like seven or eight years old, oh, Ian. Fair enough, but at the same time, he didn't kill Spider-Man, Well, of though. course he didn't kill him, but he, he, what would they say, like, suspended animation. And I love how they yeah. don't actually really give you a really definite answer what happened to him it was just what well, did yeah he was buried for two weeks and then yeah, came it's up. nice leaving those kind of questions unanswered sometimes though it's part of the story that you don't need to answer you just sort of accept and move on and you know you're expecting the big dramatic you know final fight between right. spider-man and craven once he gets out of the grave and comes back and takes his life back and i love how it never happens craven's just like i'm done with you it is one of i don't the need great... to fight with you and you're like what it's one of the Are great anticlimactic stories that marvel ever did for that exact, exact reason i mean it's one hell of an ending Ian, definitely read. Sleep oh, yeah. with it under your bed. 